EP1100, Data Communication and Computer Networks. Some illustrations in this material are collected from the book by Forreston, Data Communications and Networking, published by McGraw-Hill. I want to start by distinguishing two types of signals, analog and digital signals. Analog signals are continuous in time and also continuous in amplitude. It means, that, like in the figure on the right, that they can be drawn as a continuous curve as a function of time. Digital signals on the other side are discrete in time, so they only exist at certain points in time, and at the points where they exist, they only take one out of a limited set of amplitude levels. If you look on the right, you see that the signal can take four amplitude levels, the zeroth and the first, second and third level. Sampling is the process to go from an analog signal to a time discrete signal. We do that by sampling the signal, meaning that we read the signal value at specific points in time. If we do this correctly, we can recover the analog signal without any information loss. But then we have to obey a certain sampling rate. This is given by a theorem called the Nyquist theorem. It states that you must sample at least twice as fast as the highest frequency of the analog signal. So we denote this by fs being the sampling frequency, so it has to be at least twice as high. This frequency is often referred to as the Nyquist frequency or Nyquist rate. The Nyquist frequency is both sufficient and necessary to recover the analog signal, and there's no gain in sampling at a higher rate. This example here shows a signal which has max frequency n hertz, so we need to sample it at at least 2 n hertz. The, the interval between two values is the inverse of the sampling frequency. So in this case, it's 1 over 2n seconds. By sampling, we obtain a signal which is discrete in time, but still continuous in amplitude. The Nyquist theorem is named after Harry Nyquist, a Swede from Värmland who emigrated and was active in the United States. Sampling gives us a time discrete signal, but it still is continuous in amplitude. To get the digital signal, we need a signal which only takes amplitudes from a limited set of amplitude values. We call this quantization. So we select which amplitude values we should accept in the digital signal, and then we round off each of the sample values to its closest level. This round off gives an information loss, and this process is not reversible. So the important aspect of quantization is to design it so that this round-off error does not disturb the, the communication. For instance, if it's a voice signal that, that we, we quantize, the round-off error should not be audible or at least not disturb the, the voice communication. Once we have quantized the signal to uh, a set of finite amplitude levels, then we can represent each amplitude value by a code word of, of bits. So for instance, we could take the zeroth level and represent it by four zeros. We could have a value which represents plus 25 millivolts that could be represented by 0001. Plus 50 millivolts could be 0010. And minus 25 millivolts could be 1001. The process of going from an analog to a digital signal is sometimes referred to as pulse code modulation. So it includes both the sampling and the quantization. The sampling frequency has to be given by the bandwidth or the highest frequency of, of the signal. It's usually ensured by filtering the signal so that we know before sampling that the signal does not have any higher frequency than the one that we have designed the sampling for then we decide how many bits or how many quantization levels we should have in the signal so that we get the quality that's acceptable for the purpose of digitizing the signal. And as I said, we represent each digital amplitude value by an electric signal level. So when we want to recover an analog signal, we know that if we get a certain bit value, it should be mapped into a certain voltage level in the outgoing signal. So, for example, we could have 8-bit sample values, and they could represent quantization levels from minus 127 to plus 127, for instance, for an audio signal. And these levels from minus 127 to plus 127 will, in turn, also be mapped to certain voltage levels for the outgoing signal.
with the sampling and quantization, we go from an analog signal to a digital signal, which has a bit rate. That means that we sample it at a certain frequency, which has units, 1 over seconds, times the number of bits per sample, measured in bits, of course. So we get the unit of bits per second. One bit per second is a very low data rate, and therefore we need prefixes to, to mark that we want to have higher units, such as kilo, mega, giga, tera, and so forth. Here are some examples of PCM encoded signals. For telephony, the bandwidth of the human voice is below 4 kilohertz. So it was decided to sample at 8 kilohertz. It's enough to represent each sample by 8 bits, so the 256 levels that I had in the previous slide, and that give a bit rate of 64 kilobits per second, which has been the standard digital rate of telephony. A music CD needs to represent the full auditory spectrum of the human ear, which is around 20 kilohertz. The sampling rate was decided to be 44.1 kilohertz. Since the quality expectation is much higher, each sample is represented by 16-bit amplitude values, and that create a data rate per channel of 706 kilobits per second. And similarly, for DVD audio, there is a whole set of sampling rates and a resolution of 16, 20, or 24 bits per sample, giving a data rate up to 4.6 megabits per second per channel.